Ladies and gentlemen, part of the impeachment uh, proceedings or impeachment text is the statement that Trump is unfit to be president. So Representative Al Green read the following on the House floor Tuesday night. Madam Speaker, pursuant to the clause 2A1 of Rule 9, I rise to give no notice of my intention to raise a question of the privilege of the House. The form of the resolution is as follows, impeaching Donald J John Trump. President of the United States of high misdemeanor, <laughs> it's high crimes and misdemeanors, but whatever, resolves that Donald John Trump, President of the United States, is unfit, unfit to be president, unfit to represent the American values of decency and morality. This is, this is the Democratic Party, by the way, that, that cheated for and lost with Madam Cyberhack, who in both word, rhetoric, deed, and action far exemplified far more egregious i mean helped destroy and cause libya to be a failed state with an intervention i mean with a with a, with a, with a and a, a failed intervention i mean this is unbelievable it's unbelievable I including everything she stated just running against president obama in 08 alone David Plouffe said her behavior was the most shameful and offensive fear-mongering of the election. But this is very interesting. Unfit to represent the American values of decency and morality. I thought that I thought that the whole thing was like AOC and the squad. It's like, you know, America is, uh, we are just uh, morally bereft. And we have to fix ourselves. Respectability and civility. Honesty and, and propriety. Uh, reputability and integrity. <laughs> this is awesome. Unfit to defend the ideals that have made America great. Unfit to defend liberty and justice for all. Um, and is, as is told in the Pledge of Allegiance, the Democrats don't like the Ple Pledge of Allegiance. This is interesting. Is unfit to defend the American ideal of all persons being created equal, as exalted in the Declaration of Independence. Is unfit to ensure domestic tranquility. <laughs> okay. Promote the general welfare and to ensure the blessings of liberty to us, ourselves and our prosperity, as lauded in the preamble of... Okay, look, 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 okay. So, Democrats are not only too cowardly, the top Democrats are too cowardly to go ahead with impeaching Trump. They go back and forth, we're going to impeach him, we're not going to... They're bluffing. Or they'll go ahead with it. I think eventually they'll go. They have to go ahead with it, because Madam Secretary, the Golden Moo Moo, is going to levitate above the DNC. She's running again. Okay, again, she's going to enter the race after the third debate, or in between the second and third debate, or at, well after the third debate. That's it. She doesn't need to. Anyway, that's a whole other story. Wages up. Let's let's just see. Unemployment. Unemployment fell to three point six percent, lowest since nineteen sixty nine. Unemployment is at a fifty year low, and it might drop a lot further. A fifty year low. You're going to impeach a president because unemployment is at a fifty year low. Okay. Then you have uh, Hispanic unemployment rate drops to all-time low. This is in May of 2019. Okay. And then, of course, NPR. Hispanic unemployment hit, has hit record lows. But does that mean progress? I mean, honestly. <laughs> it's like... Oh my God! The guy can't. The guy is nothing he can do. Do you understand? Nothing he can do. I mean, if it's under Trump, you better believe it's. In, in, everything has a negative spin. This is an. <laughs> this is an actual NPR article. No wonder they're like fomenting this hysteria. The Democrats, because they realize he's going to get more than thirty percent of the Latino vote that, that Trump got in 2016. This is NPR, May 25th, 2019. Hispanic unemployment has hit record lows. But does that mean progress? I mean, really, honestly. <laughs> it's, 
<laughs> it's like, oh my god, what? Well, how could you make it? How could how could that be negative? How do you make that into a negative? I don't get it. Black unemployment rate uh, falls to okay ties record low. CNBC. Okay, right before January. Okay, so and it's still around record lows. You have wages up, by the way. Wages are finally up. Wages are ticking up. Wages are finally rising 10 years after the recession. New York Times. That's right, baby. May 2nd, 2019. So this is all information that, you know, is is, is not, it's not, you know... Uh, ben Castleman, May 2nd, 2019. For years, it was a central question and otherwise impressive recovery by the American job market. Why aren't ri- wages rising faster? And then wage growth, suddenly, wage growth suddenly picked up. Hourly earnings in April were 3.2% higher than a year earlier. The recent gains are going to those who need it most. Over the past year, low-wage workers have experienced the fastest pay increase, a shift from earlier in the recovery when wage growth was concentrated at the top under President Obama's administration. So, I mean, it's like... (laughs) It's like... Believe me, Democrats don't want this to take place. Recent gains are going to those who need it most. Over the past year, low-wage workers have experienced the fastest pay increase. He must impeach. He is unfit to serve. How is he unfit? How is the guy unfit? I, I just, I need to know this. I need to know this. <laughs> it's like... Corporate executives were complaining that they could not find people to fill all the available jobs. The fastest growth at the bottom is probably being fueled in part by recent... So... All right. What took so long? Many economists were puzzled by the slow pace decades ago... Uh, More than 70% of people getting jobs had not been counted. I'm trying to find some. How high can wage growth go? So, why wages are finally rising 10 years after the recession? All right? And you have a situation, ladies and gentlemen, where it's not just the New York Times. U.S. workers see fastest wage growth in a decade. A 10-year high wage growth for workers. Okay. Wages rise at fastest rate in nearly a decade. So you have the, the rebuttal to a great economy. Well, wages aren't growing. Well, wages are now growing. And not only that, GDP. GDP up better than expected. First quarter 2019, up 3.1% better than expected. CNBC, May 30th. And they're like, oh, it's going to be a recession. Like, why? Why would there be a recession? There's actually manufacturing Jobs being brought back to America. Okay, 500,000 manufacturing jobs. All right. So, So you have 500,000 manufacturing jobs. Marketwatch.com, this is hilarious. So you have a liberal publication saying, under Trump, manufacturing jobs grow, growth slows to a trickle. And then Marketwatch, 
U.S. enjoys best manufacturing job growth of the last 30 years. <laughs> so they can't, they can't, they, they, they just simply cannot, they cannot come to terms. They cannot come to terms with the fact that manufacturing is up. So, I mean, you have... You have all of this information that's great information, and then you have foreign policy that's a lot better, a lot better. Net increase of 500,000 manufacturing jobs. So despite some plan, there have been a net increase of nearly 500,000 manufacturing jobs on Trump's watch. So, and this is fact check. Dot org. Okay, so, I mean, we can go on forever. They, they cannot stand it. Do you understand there have been almost 4.9, this is in February of 2019, okay, there's 4.9 million jobs created in manufacturing. Oh, that's, sorry, that's, so, in fact, check 500,000 manufacturing jobs. And they even tweeted it out. So... It's like we can go on forever. You look at the look at the 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 world that we live. There are two worlds. There's a fantasy world, a fantasy world where if you live on Twitter, uh, if you li- if you live on Twitter, you know it's it's oh my god, the sky is falling. If you live in the real world. It's a pretty good economy. I mean, we're, we have a much better economy than any, at any point under President Obama's administration. That's a, like a fact. That's backed up by numerous st- uh, statistics and economic indicators. And also a much better economy than anything that took place in the Bush administration. So you're talking about, in the past 20 years, much better economy. Stock market is up under Trump. So, you know, it, it's kind of like, all right. And it, 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 when people talk about, the, the, oh, the fear and the hatred that Trump stokes, and you know, this is all in the minds of Democrats who have to believe, they have to foment, they have to spew this nonsense. Do you understand? I mean, you're talking about Hillary Clinton. Who will run again? And they're not going to win, but she's going to run again. She gives them the best chance. I mean, it's with Democrats, they have to outspend the Republican. In, in, in this case, they outspend Trump two to one, and they still lost. They have to outspend Trump two to one to even get close to Trump. So, let's just look at... Moon J in This is South Korean President Moon Jae in says Trump deserves Nobel Peace Prize. South China Morning Post. Okay. How is this not a credit to the United States of America? Reuters. South Korea president says Trump deserves Nobel Peace Prize. How is this not a great thing? I mean, you know, President Obama got the Nobel Peace Prize for doing nothing. He, he didn't do anything. And then he engaged in interventions right after he got the Nobel Peace Prize. If anyone knows what's going on in the Korean Peninsula, it's Moon Jae-in. And he says President Trump should win the Nobel Peace Prize. Give the Nobel to Donald Trump. South Korea's Moon Jae-in, give the Nobel to Donald Trump. So it's like, 
We can go on forever. What what is it that they don't like? Sorry, I'm like about to sneeze. They live in a world where they offend all the time. Read my Jerusalem Post article. It is below in the pinned comment. Check out my latest segment. Well, it's 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 an upload of when I was at the range. Sig P220 Elite, awesome. I'm going to transition my um, HA2A, my other channel, which is over 5,000 subs, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for telling everyone about HA2A. It's over 5,000 subs now. Let's get it to 10,000. I'm going to transition it to my, to my new website. It's going to come, my, my new website will come out in about a month, and it'll help you defeat any disgruntled Trump derangement syndrome case, uh, friend, family, whatever. You'll be able to defeat them. If they say, oh, well, Trump said both sides and find people on both sides, you'll be able to defeat that myth because I explain, oh, Trump is a racist. Trump um, worked with Russia. I dispel, I can, it's basically like Snopes, except I'm accurate and it's, it's basically a think tank, your own personal think tank to where you can dispel and defeat any person on the left on any major, on most, most, I should say, most major topics pertaining to Trump. So if you hear the TDS, Trump Derangement Syndrome, accusations, you can go to the website, and it's a, it's a subscription base. You'll get a little bit if you're not subscribed, but I'm going to devote the, the other channel, HA2A, it's below in the pinned comment, to that... Um, to that website, and you'll love it. And, and HA2A will have uploads, at least one every single day. So it'll be a different type of HA Goodman segment. But definitely, I'll be able to speak about more things and be more candid, and I'll let loose on that channel, whereas I'm kind of try to be um, as diplomatic as possible on this channel. But it, it, they don't have... Anything like, oh my God, Trump tweeted, he's so horrible. Oh my God, he told people to go back. No, he didn't. Sorry, read read the actual words. He said, well, then come back and tell us how it worked out. His whole th- and there were people of all different skin colors, all different backgrounds, all different ethnicities who agree with his sentiment. You could, it, It's a crude sentiment. It's uncouth. It's rude. But guess what? It's not as dangerous as AOC's latest irrational claims and i explain in the jerusalem post how dangerous they are please share my article in the pinned comment about aoc democrats i'm oh it's all about the benjamins all this stuff i mean they don't care if they offend it's just they they don't want to be offended and generally, they're not really offended. It's more a political statement. Oh, my God, he's so horrible. Now they're going, they're doing the same ridiculous thing. Well, if you're the type of person who supports Trump, I'm sorry. You're a horrible person. You're a bigot. You're a racist. It's like, no. <laughs> um, if you've, uh, Clinton has stated worse, should be brought to heel. Are you kidding me? Read, actually listen to, you could see it on YouTube. Clinton speaking about um, black youth. It, she says it in her own words. Super predators, lack empathy, brought to heel. Um, the most shameful offensive fear mongering. She helped foment the birther myth, which is, is wrong when Trump was doing it. And it's definitely wrong when Clinton was doing it. I mean, we can go on forever. Clinton referred to Mahatma Gandhi. Yes, Clinton did. Yes, Madam Cyberhack did as a gas station attendant. So, I mean, it's like these people are like, you know, oh, my God, did you see what Trump did? And it's like, you know what? Uh, in every economic measure, almost almost every single economic indicator, st- data, statistics, measurement, he's doing a phenomenal job. Presidents are generally... Uh, presidents are generally... Um, they're generally um, evaluated or judged by the economy. 
Under Bill Clinton, it was the economy, stupid. There you go. So they're generally judged by their economic performance, and he's just doing an amazing job. Now they tried to get him on Trump, uh, on Russia. That didn't work out. That was a bunch of nonsense. And now we have the Mueller testimony. It's a bunch of nonsense. And then they say, well, it didn't exonerate him. It's, it wasn't for the report to exonerate anyone. Who is, who is Mueller? Are you kidding? Who is, who is the, the report? Look, you're talking about a people who already made, made up their mind based on fabricated evidence. That's why when I say Clinton is running again, she's running again. Okay? She's running again because this is an elaborate attempt at pro- basically programming a large segment of the American population to believe that Trump is an actual criminal, when in reality, the crimes were committed by the Golden Mumu. Madam Cyberhack used servers outside of the United States government where she, where she literally, tra- literally transferred top secret and special access program intelligence. Then she shipped a laptop in the mail with classified intelligence also and all her classified emails. The movie can go on forever. You know, the interesting thing is that they, they're saying that Trump is unfit to serve, but it's like... He's unfit to serve how? How is he unfit to serve? I mean, it's it, very bizarre. He, a great economy, wages up, unemployment down, GDP better than expected, continuing to, to go up. Okay, well, what about the tariffs? Well, it's not affecting unemployment. It's not affecting the economic growth. It's actually used to restructure trade deals. We have a tremendous, tremendous trade deficit with China. So, I mean, that that's the thing. Like They're like, oh, my God. He's, you know, they're so... The Democrats are hilarious. So their rebuttals to Trump are the exact reasons people voted for Trump. Democrats are so worried about the allies, our allies. Like, it's like... You know what? (laughs) This is not a moment in time where you have to worry. Our allies interfered in the election, not the Russians. I said, oh, the Russians interfered. Why? How? By by hacking the DNC, allegedly. We have only CrowdStrike information. We have no U.S. government information on that. The ODI and DHS reports come with warranty disclaimers. And they're like, well, you know. No, it was the British... The UK, the UK uh, intelligence community, along with our corrupt intelligence chiefs, who filtered in the Steele dossier, that interfered with our political, that interfered more so than anything else. And now we're finding out that it's, the FBI and everybody knew already that it was a bunch of nonsense. They have nothing they when they, they have called Trump the same they have leveled the same accusations against Trump since 2015 you would think it doesn't work you, you would think that they would realize it doesn't work people the average american does not view trump as racist it's just the, the average american doesn't he had 62 million people voting for him he'll get more people voting and if they don't and if and if they don't get clinton he'll win the popular vote only Clinton can outspend, can, could raise enough money to outspend Trump. Okay, nobody on that debate stage from the um, exhumed cadaver, Botox, Botox man, okay, Biden, to um, Kristen Gillenbrand, nobody can come close to what Trump's going to raise. He's going to raise over a billion dollars. Clinton raised $1.2 billion. He raised $600 million in, in one. Now he's going to raise over a billion with a great economy. And the only thing they could foment is this fear and division. And they create the division. They have social media. Um, by the way, his tweets didn't even violate Twitter rules, which is hilarious. But they have social media. They're silencing voices. They're doing everything possible. They have all the, the MSNBC, CNN, New York Times, Washington. They still have the same public relations apparatus. They have Hollywood. They have 
this online world, this 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 fantasy world called Twitter. It's tanking the Democratic Party, which is hilarious. I left Twitter along the what in the beginning of the year, the end of last year, or the beginning of this year, and it's, it's great. My channel is doing wonderfully. My writing's doing great. I'm coming out with a new website. I mean, you don't need Twitter or Facebook or anything. I mean, social media is it's, it's like they're like, well, you know, you need social media in this world. It's like, no, you don't. No, you don't. You don't at all. You just grow whatever you, if you have, you know, what, whatever you're doing. If you have a podcast, you just grow it. You don't. I mean, you don't really. You get more haters on on those platforms than anything else. So it, it, it's just it's, it's unbelievable. It's unbelievable. Um, Democrats can only even get competitive. I mean, you're talking about a political party that is even afraid to impeach Trump, even though they claim that he's the he's going to usher in the end of the universe. But they can only get competitive with Clinton. Clinton is a money making machine. The only way when they say, "Well, Beto almost won," Beto O'Rourke, me no brayas, Beto. He almost won in Texas. No, he practically outspent Cruz two to one, and he still lost. If they don't outspend a Democrat two to one and have every single possible favorable media article and coverage, they they're not even they don't even get close. They won't even get close. And that's where the Democrats are at now. They don't realize also that Trump completely plays them all the time. And now they can't critique AOC and everyone else. The, the squad, they can't critique, critique them. And Pelosi and Maureen Dowd were called the axis of Sheevil, which is hilarious. You know. And, and, and now they're just, you know. Everything Trump wanted, he's getting, which is absolutely fantastic. Give me your thoughts below. He's unfit to serve, and yet everything is much better than it was under President Obama. Interesting. Give me your thoughts subscribe to HA2A and if you want to support my voice long, uh, long term my Patreon link is below in the pinned comment please 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 share my Jerusalem post op-ed everywhere it's in the pinned comment thank you